disease has befallen our people, a sheep disease, a corbett disease, our neighbors to the north, the Homo heidelbergensis, uh, got a little too close to sheep, caught a sickness and spread it to us. It's been a horrible loss and a horrible time for us these past couple days trying to cope with uh, the, uh, the, um, sorry, the, trying to cope with the, the outcome of the sickness. We lost, we lost Little Red. He's passed our ritual master our leader in ritual has gone for now and our people are are lost without that uh, that sort of solidifying routine that we use to kind of give focus to our lives um, let's take a closer look at the board here's what our demography looks like after our disease um, we, we had three more units added to our innovation track. We had a nice two, you know, a good solid two is what you want to have at least at the beginning of the game. Um, you can have one as well. Here we see Wolf Corbett's um, uh, innovation track similarly stuffed up, you know, he he also got the disease. And then you see Wolf Corbett um, with his sheep. Uh, since the, he sent pictures I changed him from a robot to a human. Um, I'm gonna have to change this fellow too because he has another, he has an alter ego who's gonna be taking over. Um, but I digress. Uh, so we lost an elder, we lost little red, then we had two fecundity decrease increases. Sorry, I'm so used to saying fecundity decrease. Um, and then we've had two days to think about it. We also got child swaddling out of the deal, which is nice. We we went up the immunology track. Um, Cow was particularly um, happy about that. She she hates to think of babies dying. Um, I think most people do, but of our group, she probably maybe especially can empathize with the death of a baby, since she has one of her own. Not to say the others don't, but you know she has one right now. She always has a baby. Um, so let's look back at the infrastructure track. As you can see, every single person has got a footprint of two and an energy stage of one, except for the cro magnons which, for those of you not following along, is who we are. Um, we're, the, we're the only ones left to, yet to domesticate. We may have been able to do it on this turn. It's our turn right now. However, we lost... Um, we lost Little Red and we don't have that sort of uh, focus that the Ritual Master gave us uh, that, that would have been required to, to get the Siva there. So we've had, we've had a couple of days. There was a, a lot of um, communication issues this past couple days. So it took a, it took a while longer than usual to get to my turn, which is fine, except that you know we had to stew in this disease the whole time. Um, Oh, and I didn't, he just, he actually just domesticated uh, a camel. I should find a camel for him. I forgot to do that. Everyone else, I gave them a little animal. So we have the Asian elephant for USR local. And we have the water bison, water buffalo. Um, I don't know if that's actually water buffalo. I tried to, in the mouflon sheep there, I tried to get as close as I could for my little figures. Um... So what other news? Uh, everyone's got metropolises and domesticated animals, except for the Crow Magnons. Um, USR Local just went into Era Two now. He and um, he and Jonathan. Jonathan's going to be turning into Jesse, but he and Jonathan both are going to be able to go in the Golden Age pretty soon. Here, um, they both they both have the requirements met. I, I think they have the easiest requirements for advancing in the game, if I remember correctly, because. I, I, Jesse, Jesse Jonathan has the easiest because he just has the energy stage which everyone else has but USR Local has the footprint you know when you get to energy stage one you also get a footprint of two um, if you do it in the classical way um, 
So we had a lot of time to think about what to do. We have one innovation action. We have a lot, you know, we have this chaos to deal with. We need to recover um, and try to advance ourselves as much as possible. That, however, is going to be difficult. I wonder why he... So he did a locution, which put him in a chaos. I wonder why he didn't just take the spark cloth beaters. Maybe this isn't what it's supposed to be on top. Hmm. Um, and I, I need to take a little break and set the camera down. Uh, but then I'll tell you what we decided to do. Right, I'll try to explain a little bit more. So we uh, we have several issues we need to deal with. One, Wolf Corbett came south here. So he's kind of in our area. Um, if he remains in this hex, we're going to starve. We don't have his ability to live off the land. Um, so we need to try to, to move there. That's one thing we're dealing with. Another thing we're dealing with is obviously we're at an age lag now. Um, two out of the five people are in era two, and I don't think it shouldn't be hard for the others to get to era two, though you know, Wolf Corbett has his own issues to deal with. Um, Another issue is we don't have an elder. We don't have a we don't have the best space that we could to to domesticate. So that's another issue we have. So we have our um, we have our population issue. We have our map issue. Um, we have our our brain issue, and we have our lack of an elder issue. And so we have to kind of decide which of those are most important. Um, how we can how we can recover best from this situation. Um, so I'm I'm speaking kind of gravely about all of this. I think normally I, I, I maybe come off as more buoyant than this particular time because what we are about to do is kind of serious. Um, but we've talked about it and everyone's kind of decided uh, one, we can see, I, I want to write a list of begats, but here we can see our list of begat. Pegasus, begat, cat, cat, as in cat, begat, giraffe. All right. Um, so here we have the older generations and going down to the youngest, even though they look, she actually looks older than she does, but, you know, they're, they're cultural entities. They're not humans in this case. But, um... Or maybe like subcultural entities. Anyway, so first thing we we got to do is our innovation action, and that innovation action um, is going to be called um, I forget what it's called. It's called Silverback. Normally in Silverback you bring two units up here. We're only going to bring one up because we don't we're out of room. Um, that puts us in a unique position. Now that's going to keep us from going into chaos particular problem with, well, yeah, but we don't want to go into chaos right now. It's just going to add insult to injury. Um, so now we, we're, we won't go into chaos because that's going to add plus two to our roll. 1d6 plus two is always going to be greater than two. Um, and now we have to do our population actions, which we, as you can see, we get three of. Um, first big one that we know we're going to do is we're going to bop this guy here. And I'm sorry, Wolf, you're kind of down, but this is actually not the worst for you. You're going to have an easier time of dealing with things without that cube there. Um, and then we have to decide what we want to do with the other two. I have a couple of ideas in mind, and I need to debate that with the ladies. Before I say more, I should note that this also takes Pegasus out of the equation. So she is the second to fall. Now I I think I've decided that these these are gonna cycle back around. Um, so when they're gone, they're not gone for good, but they're they're not gonna come back in until um, maybe I'll just leave them out here until um, the other I guess the other four make an appearance. Okay, so let me spell out our options um, at this point. We have two more population actions. We're, we're in the unique place that where when we lose population, it's the least bad for us as, as it could be because it goes to our population track. Generally, you know, we're not going to stuff up our innovation track anymore. So question is, do we want to bop um, Jonathan Jesse here with... 
uh, either Kaz and Cat or Giraffe um, with one of those. Another, another thing we might want to do is do some positioning. It'd be nice to have this space. Um, and then another thing that would be nice to do would be to do a Sabine raid since we did just um, we did just kill. Um, so we could take this card, which would let us, you know, get an elder next turn. Um, and that's a good question. I think all of this, so that's what we have to discuss between the these two. I guess these are the only two that are gonna make that choice. I don't know if it's the fever or or what it is, but uh, we've talked about it, and so you know the the original plan. If, if it had been my turn yesterday, I think it would have been um, Cad and Pegasus would be gone and then take a Sabine raid. Or Cad and Pegasus would be gone and position ourselves on the map in a particular way. Um, for some reason, we're not going to do that. Uh, talked about it and I think they just the group wants giraffe doesn't want to be the only one that goes out so when Ka is convinced to go over here and bop John Jesse Jonathan Jesse there giraffe isn't gonna savvy raid and she's not gonna take this spot by the giraffe like you would think she's gonna go rafting. Oh, you know what? I gotta check something. It might be that after they raft, they lose lose out. Let me check on that rule. But assuming they don't, she'll bop him. They're both gonna get bopped, and we're in slavery. Yeah, so even though Giraffe's attack on this cube didn't end up killing it because she did have to cross over straights, she did it anyway. Um, the sense of fairness and the sense of uh, camaraderie between all of them, even though maybe especially because they don't know each other that well yet, um, made it so that it was an attractive move for her. She doesn't want to. Giraffe's also not the sort to want to be the only only one deciding the fate of the Crow Magnum people. Um, plus, there's a sort of uh, balancing in mind. Um, Wolf Corbett also got hit pretty hard by the, the disease and Jonathan Jesse is sort of um, the top of the heap right now in a lot of respects so to take him down just a little bit even as you take Wolf down might restore some balance to the region it might also just open up Africa for everyone <laughs> um, so it might not have been you know I, I don't think the the, the the globe geopolitical or whatever balancing was the the main reason for it um uh, just kind of felt right at the time but then one's feelings might be a bit askew when one is afflicted by sheep's disease we were really close to just putting ourselves into slavery there uh, i don't remember i i've even filmed going into slavery um, I don't remember where I left off before I kind of went on that track. But we decided, Giraffe decided, I guess, at the last minute. Cat had already gone across and taken out the um, Jesse unit right there um, and herself. And see, I already took Giraffe down because they were going to be all enslaved. At the last minute, Giraffe decided to stick with it. And so she is instead, she was going to do a suicide run to enslave um, our people, but I wonder if maybe it wasn't, it wasn't the fever talking there or, or what, but it felt right. But she's going to do ransack. Generally, you know, if I'm going against my intuition, a lot of times it doesn't turn out well, but... We'll see what happens.